Sam and Bucky have really had their hands full lately. With enemies on all sides from the power broker to John Walker, these two can't seem to catch a break. But the ones kind of responsible for all of the problems that the Falcon and the Winter Soldier are currently facing, the Flag Smashers, are about to become an even bigger problem in the final episode. But just who are these anarchists? What is their history and what motivates them to tear down the borders of the world? Watchers, join us as we observe the Flag Smashers and Carly Morgenthau. Carly was originally Carl in the comics, a Swiss national and the son of a wealthy banker and diplomat. Carl lived all over the world as his father traveled as a diplomat, which helped him to experience many cultures and learn many languages, but stunted his social growth as the constant relocating made him feel like an outcast. During his travels, he took opportunities to learn martial arts, quickly mastering those skills, and also went to school to follow in his father's footsteps and use his political knowledge to help the cause of world peace. But when his father was trampled and killed during a riot outside the Latvian embassy, Carl decided to change his methods. He still wanted peace as his father did, but felt his father's approach was far too passive. So Carl used the method he felt others would respond to, violence. Carl would end up using his inheritance to purchase a vast array of experimental weapons and create a costume persona of the Flag Smasher. His main attacks were on symbols of nationalism, namely flags and embassies. His main enemy over the years was Captain America, since he stood for America and patriotism towards his country, everything that Carl stood against. They had quite a few bouts, but since Carl was not a super soldier, he didn't win any of those fights. Upon his original defeat by Captain America, he was actually deported back to Switzerland for his crimes, but upon returning joined Ultimatum, as they shared many of his goals. But since that organization was revealed to be founded and run by Red Skull, Carl eventually joined forces with Captain America, who was actually John Walker at the time, and they took down the organization. After this, though, he did return to his anarchist terrorist ways, though, still trying to use violence to pursue world peace. There was even a point where Captain America tried to reason with him, and admitted that he agreed with his cause, although he disliked the method. They never did agree, and Captain America did eventually have to take him down again. With this little bit of history, we can see vast differences between Carl and Carly, but also quite a few similarities. With Carly, outside of the gender swap, the biggest difference is her history. When referring to her family at Mama Danya's funeral, she says, I don't remember my mother or my father. Same goes for siblings, grandparents, and cousins. What I do remember is being alone. Worse than being hungry or cold or scared, I was alone. Until Mama Danya. Like a lot of you here, she saved me, clothed me, fed me, loved me. It seems that Carly was an orphan for all of her life and was taken care of by Mama Danya. Although not much is known about Danya, the necklace or trinket she carries is clearly the inspiration for the Flag Smasher symbol. Mama Danya clearly had a lot of influence on Carly's life and who she is today. She may be a big reason why Carly is doing what she is doing, possibly filling a similar role to that of Carl Morgenthau's father, where Danya may have wanted world peace but went about it peacefully. And it seems that one possibility is that Carly survived the snap, but Mama Danya did not, leaving Carly alone for five years from the age of 14 to 19. And during the blip would have seen the world come together as Mama Danya wanted. But now at Danya's return after the Avengers returned everyone because of the Hulk snap, and seeing the dream of world peace that Mama Danya may have had crumble at the return of everybody, this is eventually what caused a young Carly to go out and take up the mantle of Flag Smasher. So she realized that to really fix the world, it was time to fight for peace, attempting to rip down the bureaucracy that got in the way of people actually coming together and changing the world. So it seems that both Carl and Carly's goals are fairly similar, world peace without the red tape and people in power controlling everyone. They even both agree that violence is the only language that their enemies will understand, which is interesting since prior to Sam, Bucky, John, and Lamar's involvement, many of the Flag Smashers appeared to just harm their enemies and had no interest in actually killing them. But as the story progressed, Carly became more radicalized, much to the dismay of at least one of her Flag Smashers, Dovich, who seems to be her second in command. When she decided to blow up the GRC storage and eventually buys weapons from and teams up with Batroc, he is visibly distressed, and he did not agree with what she wanted to do. But he still seems to follow her lead anyway. Because in the end, he and the fellow Flag Smashers do join up with her to kill John Walker, as he is the symbol of Captain America and patriotism. But upon the death of Lamar, he and the rest seem to realize that they might have gone a bit too far, and fled with the rest of them, including Carly. As time has gone on, Carly definitely becomes more like her comic book inspiration, turning from a bit of an anti-hero as she was at the start of the season, 
as she tried to fight government corruption and bureaucracy, to someone who is fully embracing the title of criminal, murderer, and terrorist. And to some extent, she doesn't even notice this change at the start, because as she's telling Sam in referring to killing innocents, they're not innocent. They're roadblocks in my journey, and I'd kill them again if I had to. This displays that the need for blood to fuel her cause is growing, especially because right after this, she does accuse Sam of tricking her into saying that. She is an interesting and complicated character because she displays a view many people can share, including Sam, as he thought he could reason with her. Ultimately being interrupted by her complete opposite, John Walker. World peace and cooperation is a noble goal, but killing those who oppose that goal is contradictory to the purpose of her fight. And Sam sees that and will eventually become the symbol that the post-blip world needs. A mixture of patriotism for a country he fought for that his friend died for, as well as an understanding for the impoverished and destitute. Carly may not have started off a full-on villain, but as time has gone on, Zemo has proven right. That power has gone to her head, not just the serum, the power being able to call and guide her followers all over the world. We know she has all the powers the super soldier serum grants, but at the same time the personality that it seemed to enhance was her recklessness of youth, not thinking about what she is doing and who it may be harming. After all, she is impulsive, as you'd expect a 19 year old to be, since that is how old she is said to be, and that has only been increased it seems by the serum. For Steve, his good spirit got amplified, John got his anger amplified, but her? It seems that it was her impulsive recklessness that got enhanced. But with all of this being said, I would like to propose one more theory before finishing up. A theory about Carly's actual history. I think we may find that Carly is a bit of a liar, and may know more about her history than she is putting on at Danya's memorial. Some things I've noticed is that Carly seems to have a lot more resources and connections beyond that of an orphan who grew up in the streets. I believe that it may be the case that Carly herself had a very different life before the snap, and since she seemed to have survived it, was 14 when it occurred. So, I think that she might be a lot more like her comic inspiration than previously stated. So when Thanos snapped his fingers, her whole family of wealthy influential diplomats got dusted or killed in the chaos leaving her alone to be found and raised by Mama Danya. During the five years of the blip, she was raised by Mama Danya, who taught her the ideals that would one day make her the Flag Smasher. A couple things that really make me think this, again, is her connections and ability to receive help from all over the world. Many of the things needed to make this necessary would cost a significant amount of money, possibly from a wealthy family inheritance. She also seems to have the ability to speak multiple languages with ease, communicating so far in French and English fluently. And then her knowledge and ability to both travel among many nations, able to maneuver through these countries, able to cross borders with ease, going unnoticed by many of the authorities. While this definitely can have some tie to her followers, again, the tech needed to spread that influence probably doesn't come cheap. And then on top of that is her fighting ability. While the super soldier serum does enhance strength, it doesn't necessarily increase your ability to fight. So she could have been raised in a home where she was taught to fight to defend herself from those who would harm her or her family. So it might be revealed that she is a rebellious teenager who's using her forgotten past to fund her cause, as righteous and misunderstood as she thinks it might be. What are your thoughts on the Flag Smashers and Carly Morgenthau? Do you think it'll be the last we see of them in the final episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Or do you think they'll show up again in the MCU? Thank you so much for watching with us today. Don't forget to tell us what you think in the comments below, and then like this video and subscribe to The Marvelous Wave to assemble and join our team, and have a great day.